On this episode of South Hawk Computing, we're going to get a little creative when we install our level two charger, saving us a bunch of cash. And that's coming up next. <laughs> Hey YouTube, Dan from South Hog Computing with a, what I would consider, a, not really a hack, but a little bit of cheating at the very least. Today we're gonna basically build a really long extension cord for our NEMA 1430 connector that is basically what our dryer at the home actually plugs into. So we're gonna get this accomplished by obviously the following things. First off, we have half inch wood staples to help secure the cable when we've finished running it. Next up is a NEMA 1430 receptacle or female uh, version or variety of it. A NEMA 1430 male connector. And lastly, 10 slash three electrical cable, 50 feet. Basically the 10 is the gauge of the wire. Three is the amount of cables, not including the ground. So before we go any further, full disclaimer, I am not a licensed electrician. You should not take my video as gospel and or as advice. If you choose to do something similar in your own home, you're doing it at your own risk. I will not be held responsible. If you watch this video, try to clone what I do here. You'll be on your own and you will assume all responsibilities if something should go wrong. Okay, so why am I doing this? Well, number one, the circuit breaker panel in my house is completely full. I don't have any available spots to run a 30 or 50 amp circuit to, or else I would have. Number two, the dryer itself is on a 30 amp circuit. Typically, the rule of thumb, especially with older houses, is you don't want to go 30 amps. I believe the standard is you should only go 80% of that. You have different types of level two chargers. There's a 16, there's a 20, and a 24. If you stay within that amperage on a 30 amp circuit breaker, you'll be fine. Because I only have 30 amps, this is why I went with the 10 gauge electrical cable here. So I'm not one of these uh, extremely successful YouTubers here, so I don't have dispensable income to throw in another junction box and run the cable with a licensed electrician. And you know, at the end of the day, probably spend anywhere from one to $2,000 additional costs. It's just not in my budget. All right, so I guess the first thing to to do is let's check out the situation. So we're at the dryer location, and as I said before, we have a if I can get it out, a standard NEMA 1430P. I always get confused. It's something about the ground that's a different connector, but basically that's our standard NEMA 1430 connector. Basically, I'm gonna unplug the dryer whenever I'm charging my EV. So the nice thing about this setup is down in the basement here where the dryer is located, my ceiling is all open. So it'll be a very easy installation to go all the way down to the opposite end of the house to punch through the attached garage, pop the other end of NEMA 1430. Step one, let's run the cable, get it all stapled up. Okay, so an hour later, we got the cable ran to the garage. That's the most elegant looking thing. Time to put the male end on this connector. And this end is done. I'd rather not say how long this guy took. On to the garage. All right, and here's the other end. This is obviously the garage. We got the line running into the wall. Pay no attention to Mr. Chair here, but it was pretty straightforward with that. All right, now it's time for the next part. Let's go take a look at our level two charger. Oops, I almost forgot. Before we even look at the level two charger, here is what the manufacturer's level one charger at the 12 amp setting does. It gives you about one to two kilowatt hours on its charge. And here is our level two charger. This guy here, before I even talk about the contents of this box, I just wanted to say that I ended up ordering this on a Monday. I think it was around nine o'clock. And I kid you not, 10 o'clock, my phone rings. 
it says potential scam, but honestly, I thought that was a bit weird because I've never recalled a scamming phone call calling that late in the evening. So I indulged and I picked up and it was actually primecom.tech. I don't know if the person on the phone was a tech support or a salesperson, but he actually called me because I ordered the NEMA 1430 version of the connector. And he was saying that one of the pins could basically be removed and I could use it for both my NEMA 1430 as well as a NEMA 1450. So I was like, fantastic. I was like, absolutely. So they offered to remove the pin for free. And we're gonna take a look at that in a second. But I thought that was pretty cool. The gentleman on the phone basically was like, they're a new company. They're doing everything that they can to help promote the business. So hopefully this video will help out those guys in some way, provided that this all works out. I'll put a link in the description below for you guys if you wanna check this thing out on Amazon. So why did I pick this particular charger since there's so many out there? Well, number one, adjustable amperage. Again, as I stated before, my circuit breaker is only 30 amps. You're not allowed to use 30 amps entirely. So basically my target is this guy right here, 24 amps, because you're only allowed to use 80% of the 30 amp circuit breaker. Enough chit chat, Dan, let's crack this guy open. All right, so what we have in the box here is obviously the control module so you can set your amperage, what you'd like. This is what I was talking about before where they removed the neutral pin here. I have the two hot wires in the ground and that's basically all this device needs to power the unit and charge your car. So this way I could use this again for a NEMA 1430 and a 1450. You have this nice little hook to hang up the excess cable here. That was another reason why I picked this because I believe this is a 30 foot or 20 footer. I really can't remember. We also have some hardware here where you could actually plug this in when you're not using it. So whatever dust and whatnot doesn't get into there. And lastly, the provided instructions on how to use this. So my next plan of attack is obviously to get both this guy mounted here and also this for the cable. And let's go upstairs and do that real quick in the garage. So as far as placement here, I guess what I'm gonna end up doing is this. Spare wood, we'll mount that there and then have everything set up through that. So I think that will work best. So let's get to it. Okay, well, the screws might have been a little too long, but they're in, they're supporting it. That's all I really care at this point because I got no battery and I really don't want to reuse my level one charger tonight when I plug in my car. So it is what it is. We'll swap out those screws at another time and that'll be super simple to do. Okay, so let's get the brackets installed. Everything looks good. Let's do a dry fit now. I think I just need one screw. I mean, technically I could do... Oh no, it's only one screw there. Wow, I scratched up pretty darn good just by trying to squeeze that existing uh, drywall screw in there. Let me see what else I have down in my supply closet there. Okay, so here's our dry fit. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, not the prettiest thing, but I mean, it's doing what it's supposed to. I'll be able to read the LCD panel on the primecom.tech, which is pretty cool. I guess what I'll do next is plug in the power downstairs and see what happens and if there's any fault codes. Here we go. Okay, so moment of truth time. I didn't know this, that apparently if you attempt to charge your car while it's rolled up, this can cause overheating. So that's something I just learned. So basically you have to unwind everything when it comes time to charge. The only time it should be wound up is when it's not in use. All right, drum roll time. We're gonna plug it in, that line is hot. Let's see what happens. Yeah. All right, so as you can see, we do have a red light. I'm not sure what's going on with it. It's actually reporting correctly on the LCD screen. If we consult a little chart here, basically red light, but it says flashing. And obviously that guy there is not flashing. So I'm not sure what that red light means. 
So let me email the manufacturer and see what they say. Okay, so quick update. I did bring this guy downstairs to where the actual dryer connection is and the same lights come up. So now I know it's not my wiring that's the issue. It may actually be the box to my dryer that could be the problem here. So let me go check real quick with these guys on, I mean, here we are on a Sunday. I doubt they're gonna respond, but let's see what they have to say and we'll take it from there. So it's been 24 hours later and we got a little update here. I actually brought this downstairs to my direct dryer connection. I was still getting the green LED and the last one was a solid red. So my next course of action was to go to one of my neighbors and basically see if they had the same NEMA 1430 connector, which they did, and I plugged it in and it's the same thing. So then I started to think, well, maybe because they removed this pin, be, you know, NEMA 1430 or 1450 compatible, it's cranky about that. I decided to give primecom.tech a call and believe it or not, because of their, I apologize, I think it was their UL certification, they do have to have a red light on this device showing that it's quote unquote energized. It must be some sort of code thing. That's actually normal operation. So if you happen to buy this and you get the green light on the top, which we're gonna do in a second, and the red on the bottom, solid, not blinking, that means it is ready to actually charge your car. Without further ado, let's do this. And here you go. Again, I'm running a 30 amp circuit. This says 24 amps. Now we got a green and solid red, not blinking. So we should be able to plug it into the car and go. All right, and again, you are not to actually wind up the cable and I got the 30 foot length cord here and that ends up being the perfect length to the opposite side of the car. The car is on and now let's see what happens. God, I'm so nervous. If I could actually see the connector. Am I doing this wrong? No, I got it. Okay. Oh, we got the blinking green light. That's great. I heard a click going on over here. We got charging. It says it's pulling it at six kilowatts, which is a huge improvement on what the level one charger does. The level one charger, I believe, was only doing one kilowatt. Now let's see what this guy says. And there you go, six, <laughs> six kilowatts, not too shabby. With this charger and 24 amps, I have 104 miles. The current temperature outside is about 63. So in the garage, let's say it's a little bit warmer. But as you can see, it's expected to complete its charge at 2 a.m., which I don't want right now. But that's awesome. I could actually hear the water cooling going through the battery right now. It's probably not gonna be able to pick it up through the actual microphone on this uh, camera here. So it turns out there's nothing else really to check out. I mean, the good thing is that it's actually working. We got our flashing green light saying that the battery's actually charging. Again, it says six kilowatts that's charging on the right-hand side. Where normally had one so this is fantastic this thing is actually working so we'll see if it actually stands the test of time i guess pretty much sums it up this is quite the endeavor i thought this was going to end up in a fourth epic fail but it was actually a win hallelujah so if you enjoyed this video please give it a big old thumbs up leave a comment below join our forums subscribe to the channel it would be greatly appreciated as always this is dan from south hawk computing and until the next time Thank you.